Hey guys, Danny Wu here again. Welcome back. So this week we are going to be working on 3D and P5.js. The first thing we're going to be focusing on is playing around with the renderer. So the renderer we haven't really touched as of yet, um, but that's basically changing the environment, the rendering environment. So we're going to change the renderer to a WebGL renderer, which is a uh, web 3D environment. With P5, there are a number of different 3D shapes that we can play around with. So there is a box function, there's a sphere function, and then we can make more complex shapes using begin shape and end shape uh, and vertex points for X, Y, and Z. There are transformation functions that we're going to play around with today, including rotate X, rotate Y, and rotate Z. And then for the translate function, well, we're going to um, talk about the X, Y, and Z values that you could pass into it. Up until this point, we've only been working in a 2D environment. But now that we're working in a 3D environment, we're going to be um, playing around with the Z, Z axis, the depth. For light, lighting and cameras, um, there is a camera function that passes in an X and a Y and a Z. Uh, center X, center Y, and center Z. That's basically where the center of the sketch is. And then up X, up Y, and up Z. That's for the camera position, essentially. For lighting, there's an ambient light function. You can pass in RGB, red, green, and blue value, and an alpha channel. And then there's an ambient material function, which is kind of similar, pass in the same values. And then there's a directional light function, which is kind of like a, a spotlight. We are also going to talk about how to um, apply a texture, an image texture, to any one of these shapes, the box or, or the sphere, or a uh, more complex shape use, using uh, vertex points. And then we're also going to play around with how we upload a 3D OBJ file. For P5, because it's a rendered in the, the browser, it, it doesn't allow for really detailed 3D, um, 3D files to be imported. So we're going to just play around with a, a very basic design. Um, but you can import 3D files as OBJ files. So the first sketch that we're going to play around with is just getting comfortable with the uh, the renderer, uh, the WebGL renderer. In Create Canvas, you can pass in three values, not just two. You pass in the width and height of your canvas, but you, you can also pass in the, the render type uh, that you're going to be working with. So we're going to be using the WebGL renderer, so that's what the value we're going to pass into the Create Canvas function. Once we have determined that the renderer is going to be WebGL and we're going to be programming in a 3D environment, then we can play around with 3D elements and uh, the, Z, the Z value in draw. The first thing we're going to play around with is just creating a box element that allows you to pass in a width, a height, and a depth. And then we're going to play around with the rotate uh, X and rotate Y to just make the, the box move on the stage. To make it move, we're going to use the values for the, the current frame count that we're on and multiplying it by a decimal point, a smaller number, it's basically just going to make it so it's, it's not going super fast when it's rotating. So let's go to the web browser and go to the, uh, the web editor for P5. Let's create a new sketch. In setup, we have our create canvas. and draw, we have our background. Um, so we can play around with 400 by 400, that's fine. But the first thing that we want to do, because we are working in a 3D environment, is change the renderer to WebGL. And I believe this has to be all uppercase. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's um, case sensitive, so WebGL has to be on all, in all caps. And then I'm going to create a background of black. And draw, I'm going to change the backgrounds to black as well. And let's just run the sketch and see if it's working. OK, great. So we have a black background. The renderer is WebGL. So we should be able to draw a box. So let's do that first. Let's draw a box using the box function. And let's make it um, a width of 100, a height of 100, and a depth of 100 as well. Play that. All right, cool. So we got something showing up. It doesn't look like a box. Um, it just looks like a square, right? It still looks like we're in a 2D environment. That is because 
we are just looking at one side of that box. We're not looking at it and in any other angle or or any other um, view. So the easiest way to do this is to just rotate it. So why don't we rotate, do a rotate function and we're gonna use the rotate X function first and let's rotate it on frame count. So this is a standard variable that comes with P5 that is basically just giving us a count every time we go through the draw loop. So it's a frame count. How many frames have we gone through so far? So if we just run that as is, let's see what happens. Okay, cool. So it's moving, but it's moving super fast. So why don't we slow that, that down a little bit and just multiply this by 0 0.01. Yeah, that's that's much easier to see. So we have a rotating box. Why don't we play around with the rotating on the y-axis too? Rotate y, and let's just do the same thing. Frame count times zero point zero one. Nice. And notice that frame count has a capital C in it. Um, so this is case sensitive as well. So if it's a lowercase c, then I don't, I don't think it'll work. So make sure that you have frame count with a capital C in it. Cool. So we have a WebGL 3D environment with a rotating box, which is rotating along the X and Y axis. So let's stop that. And let's go back and go to the next sketch. So the next thing that we're going to play around with is lighting with WebGL in the 3D environment. So because we are working in a 3D environment, lighting is, is pretty much key when it comes to color and shading and uh, the different values of the color and the, the tone of the, the 3D objects. For this, we are going to be playing around with ambient light, and we are also going to be playing around with directional light. We are going to control the, the direction of that directional light using our mouse X and mouse Y value. So the, the cursor is going to control where the spotlight essentially is going to be sh uh, shown. We are going to draw a box and a sphere and kind of combine those. Uh, and that will also rotate. Uh, this will just be on a different axis so we don't look at it at a straight on point of view. If we did that, then it'll just look like it's two dimensional. All right, so let's go back to the web editor and we are going to put the sketch together. All right, let's go ahead and delete everything and draw up to background. Let's draw our shapes first. Okay, so let's draw a box and that is gonna be 400 by 100 by 400 depth. And let's draw a sphere as well. And a sphere allows you to pass in a, I believe it's the diameter of the sphere. Run that. Okay, so we got a box with a sphere in the middle. Cool. All right, so it's it's not positioned in the, the best way to play with. So let's, let's play around with the transformation uh, translate this to a better location and then also rotate it so it's at a different angle. I'm going to wrap this in a push and pop just so it's kind of grouped. And then we're going to do a translate. Um, so translate allows us to pass in a X. I'm going to do zero and, and a Y, also zero. And then Z is the third value. And it looks like this is really kind of close to us. Um, so we're going to push this back into the depth, into the distance with a negative value, negative 500. Okay, I'll run that. Looks good. It's not too close, not too far. It's kind of in the Goldilocks zone. It looks like it's a good size. So let's also rotate this. So let's rotate it along the x-axis, and I'm going to use radians. Um, let's do 45 degrees. Play it. Okay, cool. 
And then let's rotate it along the Y as well. Radians 45. Let's do Z instead of Y. That looks a little funny. Let's do Z. There we go, that's better. So as you can see, with three dimensional objects, everything's kind of made up as, as different planes. So we have these triangles that are creating the sphere. Um, and those are basically just strokes. So if we do uh, in setup a no stroke, then we can turn that off. So now it just looks like it's a white blob in the middle of this black void. And that's because we have no lighting. We have, we have no um, lighting to give shadows or depth or, or tone or color. So the first thing we're gonna do is pass in a ambient, ambient light. And this allows us to pass in RGB. So I'm just gonna do black. Okay. Okay, so now it's just black. Um, so let's play around with uh, directional light. Let's do directional light. And this allows us to pass in uh, RGB and an XYZ. So let's try green, so zero, oops, zero, 255, zero, okay. All right, so I guess you could just pass in an RGB and you get something, but I'm getting a little message here at the bottom. It says directional light was expecting at least four arguments, but receiving only three. Okay, so let's add a couple more. Uh, so the next is the direction that uh, the light is coming from. Well, let's just pass in a, a, a couple of numbers first. So let's just do X and Y first. So let's do one, one, and zero. Let's try 100. I'm curious if this is. So you could pass in any value for the position. So as you do change the values here, then you could see the lighting is changing the position of where the origin of that light is changing. So the shadows on our 3D object are also changing. So you can play around with this a little bit more and make it interactive by applying the mouse X, mouse Y uh, value to the X and Y or the Z value in the directional light. So let's pass in, let's create a variable for directional Y set that equal to, let's just try mouse Y for now, and var directional X equals mouse X. All right, so let's see what happens when you just pass in direction X and D-I-R-Y. Okay, cool. So that looks pretty good, actually. I don't know if we need to go further than that. So that is controlling our the position of where the lighting's coming from on the X, Y, and Z coordinates for where the mouse is. So you could play around with uh, the value of the mouse X, mouse Y too, if we wanted to. Let's try doing mouse Y divided by height and mouse X divided by width. Let's see what that does. No, not much of a difference, but a little bit. Um, and then we could play around with the ambient light too if we wanted to. Let's try doing red ambient light. So the ambient light mixed with the green directional light is giving us like an orange color. Let's make this a little less harsh. Let's do 100 for the red. So you can use uh, the directional light and the ambient light as a way to mix like new uh, new colors by combining those two colors. So you can play around with those values to get the, the effect that you're going for. So that is ambient light and directional light. All right, so the next thing we're gonna play around with are the cameras, so the camera position. So this is, this can be a little tricky just because there's so many values that we're gonna pass in. So for camera, we can pass in nine different values. 
so we have a X and Y and Z coordinate for where the camera position is. And then the next three are the center X, center Y, and center Z for where the original start point is or where the center of our, our sketch is going to be. And then the last three are up X, up Y, and up Z. And that's basically where is up. Is the camera upside down? Is it um, right side up, et cetera, et cetera. I believe it's a zero or one value for the most part, or maybe it's a decimal value. You can play around with that for up X, up Y, and up Z. Uh, I usually just start my center at zero, zero, zero. So that's um, just the center point of the, of the canvas, but you obviously could change that to whatever you want. And then we're going to play around with mapping the mouse X and mouse Y to the X, Y, and Z coordinates for the camera. So as you move the mouse to the left, to the right, and up and down, the camera is going to move as well. All right, so let's go back. Stop this sketch. Okay, so let's go back into draw. And we are going to delete everything up to background. So we're basically going to start from scratch. All right, so why don't we draw a box first? Just so we have something to look at. Uh, let's do 90 by 90 by 90 for the width, height, and depth. So let's run that, see if we get it. Okay, great. Um, let's add some lighting. Let's add an ambient, ambient light. Uh, red. And let's add some directional light too. Uh, let's do 200, 200, 200, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 1. Let's see how that looks. All right, cool. So again, it just looks two-dimensional because we're not rotating it or angling it in any way. Um, we're not going to use the rotate x, rotate y, or rotate z function here. Instead, we're going to use the camera and allow the camera to basically rotate around the object. So you can kind of think of this as being um, a physical space with a physical camera, and you're moving the camera around this object in space. For the camera function, we could pass in the x and y and z values. We could pass in the center x, center y, and center z values, and we could pass in the ups x, up y, and up z values. So let's just put, for now, let's just do 0, 0, 0 for the x, y, and z. Center x, y, and z, let's do 0, 0, 0. And the up x, up y, up z, let's do 0 for x, 1 for y, and 0 for z. Okay, let's run that and see what we get. Oh no, it's lost in space. OK, so I think it's because we have the 0 for x, y, z, and zeros for the center x, center y, center z. So let's do, uh, let's do 500 for the z. OK, great. So we're basically pulling the camera away from the center point to pulling the camera back to see more of the object in front of us. Uh, let's do, let's play around with the, the Y value. Let's try 100. Um, I'm going to turn off, I'm going to comment off this no stroke so we could see the stroke around it. All right, so to 50 as well. Let's try a bigger number, let's try uh, 200. Okay, so then we could basically just take these values and then instead of just hard coding a number in there, we can pass in the value for mouse X and mouse Y. Uh, I'm going to map it between, let's just map it between like negative 300 and 300. So it's not just going completely all over the place. So let's do var direction for Y and set that equal to map between 
map for mouse y original is going to be zero in height and we're going to change that to negative 300 and 300. Then let's do a variable for direction for z and we're going to map this to mouse x. Map to mouse x between zero and width to go between negative 300 and 300. All right, so 200 is going to change to dir y. 500 is going to change to dir z. All right, let's try this. Cool. So we're basically changing the position of the camera along the y axis and the position of the camera along the z, the depth. So as the mouse goes up and down, it's going to change the y value between negative 300 and 300. If it goes left to right, it's going to change the z value, the, the depth essentially. So let's go ahead and stop this sketch and we're going to go back and take a look at texture. So a texture is a function that is, is kind of similar to fill or kind of similar to tint where you're basically taking a image and using it as a texture on top of a three-dimensional object. So it's wrapping around, wrapping that image around the three-dimensional object. Basically you use it just like we were using it when we were loading in images. We use the load image function and then instead of applying that image just as an image, we are applying that image to a texture on a three-dimensional object, in this case, a sphere. So why don't we go get an image? I have one, if you go to creativecode.danywu.com, have one on our class website for week 11. Download the globe texture. So I'm going to save this image as and just save it to the desktop. And let's go back to our web editor. And let's go ahead and delete everything and draw up to the background. And just play that, just make sure everything's working okay. Great. Okay. So with images, we have to upload with any sort of external files, we have to upload that file to our root directory. So if you click on this little uh, right carrot on the left hand side, and then click on the down arrow next to select files, you can go to upload file. And you can either click and drag the file to this area or you can click and find that file and upload it. And once you see it in the root directory, then we're good to use it. Okay, so at the top, let's use, let's create a variable for image, IMG. Um, so we, could, we can load this image in the setup function, or we could use a preloader. Preloader is probably better to use, so why don't we use that? So I'm gonna create a function for my preload function. And I am going to load in my image using the load image function by passing in where that image lives. In this case, it's in the same root directory in the same folder as my sketch.js file. So all we have to do is reference the name of the file. Uh, so in quotes, I'm going to say world 32k.jpg. Let's just hit Play, make sure that we're not getting any error messages. Looks good. Okay, I'm gonna close this root directory just so we have more space to look at. Okay, so now that we have our image loaded in, now we can start using it using the image IMG variable. So in draw, let's create a sphere. Sphere. 
100 by 100 by 100. Okay, looks good. Okay, so we have a sphere, um, but it just looks like a circle because there's no lighting or any, any textures attached to it yet. So why don't we just add a texture using the texture function? And then we're just gonna pass in the image that we just uploaded and created using the IMG variable. Cool, so we have a texture on our sphere. But again, it just kind of looks two dimensional because it's not rotating or anything. So I, why don't we do the same thing that we did before with our uh, other shapes by rotating it. Rotate X using the frame count and multiply it by a smaller number so it's not going super fast. Great, so it's rotating along the X axis. Let's, uh, let's do this along the Y instead. I think that makes more sense, right? It's rotating along the, the poles. So we have a sphere that's rotating that has a texture of the world map on it. So it looks like a, um, it looks like planet Earth spinning through the, um, through the universe. So if you just added other planets in there and a star system, then it would look like a, a galaxy, which is kind of cool. Cool. So let's go ahead and stop that. And we're going to look at one more, one more sketch today. So we're going to load in a 3D object uh, that was rendered in something like Rhino or Maya and exported as an OBJ file. So this is just a very simple teapot object. We can play around with that using ambient light and directional light. So the first thing we want to do is go to get a file to play around with. So let's go back to the creative coding website for week 11. And we are going to download uh, that OBJ file by clicking on I'm a little teapot. Just download it to the desktop. And then it's a zip file, so let's show it in Finder and unzip it. And then we have an OB, OBJ file of a teapot that we can play around with. Awesome. So let's go back to the web editor. And I am going to, again, delete everything up to background and draw. And we could delete this image. Let's keep the preloader because we are going to load in that uh, OBJ file. So just like loading an image, we have to load in our OBJ file into our root directory here. So if you click on that caret on the left-hand side and then the down arrow and then upload the file, we can upload that unzipped OBJ file. And then once you see it in our file structure, then we know that we have it there and we can start using it. So just like with loading in images, we want to preload, use the preload function to load in uh, our OBJ file. So let's create a variable for, we could call it teapot. And preload, we're gonna say teapot equals load, and we're loading in a model this time. And you handle it the same way as loading in an image. You just reference where the model, the OBJ file lives uh, because it's in the same folder structure as the sketch.js file. We can just reference the name tpot.obj. Okay, let's hit play. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to close this uh, root directory so we have more to look at. And let's then load in the model. So in draw, I'm going to say model. And then we're going to reference the variable we use, which is teapot. So that's how you load in a model. Cool. So it came in upside down, which is fine. You can play around with the camera, the rotation to get it uh, in the position that you want. Let's also add some 
lighting. So I'm going to do ambient, ambient light. Let's do red again. And directional light. Two hundred, two hundred, zero, zero, one. Okay. Cool. Um, let's also rotate. Well, let's do the x axis, and we're gonna use frame rate again. Uh, sorry, frame count again. Times zero point zero one. Cool. So as you can see, the stroke is still on there. So you can see all the um, all the triangles that are making up this more complex, more abstract, sorry, more complex shape. So if you do no stroke, then that'll remove all those strokes so it looks a little cleaner. So we grabbed an OBJ file, you can create your own. Um, but like I said, I wouldn't go too complex with the shape that you're creating. Keep it simple just because yeah, this environment can't handle anything like overly complicated. Something like a teapot or something basic, it can handle, but anything beyond that, uh, you might run into some processing problems. All right, so that is our little teapot. So let's stop that sketch. So that is all I have for you today when it comes to 3D and P5 using WebGL. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or write comments on the YouTube channel or Slack me, and I am happy to answer any questions or get any comments that you have. Uh, thank you and enjoy playing around with the 3D environment.